Beat Elementary Students Book by Ingrid Freeburn, Jonathan Bygrave, and Judy Copage. Published by Pearson Longman. CD2 Unit 5 Truth and Lies Lesson 5A Were you in my room? Exercise 1 Listen and read Complete the dialogue with the correct phrases from the box Where's your brother? He's in Italy on a college football tour No I'm not I'm back. Come in, you two. Hi, Toby. How was Italy? It was great. I was in Rome on the 16th of June, Florence on the 21st, and I was in Milan yesterday. Cool. I want to go to Italy. Greg, were you in my room last week? No, of course not. Why? Because my DVDs are on my bed. Look! They weren't there before. They were on my chair. Why are they on my bed? Dunno. It wasn't me. And my tennis racket isn't here. I don't play tennis. Greg, I wasn't born yesterday. I'm going out now. And when I get back, I want my tennis racket back. He's so cool. Cool? You're crazy. Exercise 5. Listen and write the celebrity birthdays. Oh yes, that was Tell Me You Love Me by DJ Blue, featuring Amy Kidd. Now it's time for... Same Birthdays. Who's on line one? Paula. Hello, Paula. When's your birthday? It's on the 13th of January. The 13th of January. You've got the same birthday as... Orlando Bloom. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, who's on line two? Carl. Hello, Carl. When's your birthday? It's on the 4th of June. The 4th of June. Oh, you lucky boy. You've got the same birthday as Angelina Jolie. Nice one. You're welcome. OK, last caller. Who's on line three? It's Laura. OK, Laura. When's your birthday? It's on the 31st of January. The 31st of January. You've got the same birthday as Justin Timberlake. Do you like Justin Timberlake? Don't I? Oh. And my mum, her birthday is on the 11th of December. The 11th of December. Your mum has got the same birthday as Leonardo DiCaprio. Do you like him? Don't I? Does your mum like him? Don't I? Lesson 5B. It chased the cat. Exercise 1. Read the story. Who was the owner of the dog? Urban myths. True or false? Bad dog. A young man arrived for a job interview at the house of a rich businessman. On his way to the house, he noticed a big black dog in the man's garden. Did he like dogs? No, he didn't. He hated them. He hurried to the house. The dog followed him into the businessman's living room. It didn't behave well. It walked all over the house. It jumped on the sofa with its dirty paws. It chased the cat. The businessman didn't stop the dog and he didn't talk to it at all. The young man was very surprised. 
The interview finished, and he walked out of the house. The businessman stopped him and called out, "Don't forget your dog." Exercise six: pronunciation. Ed endings. A. Listen and repeat the past simple form of the verbs in exercise three. How is the ed ending of each verb pronounced? Answered. Arrived. Asked. Behaved. Called. Carried. Chased. Decided. Discovered. Dropped. Finished. Followed. Happened. Hated. Hurried. Jumped. Liked. Listened. Looked. Loved. Noticed. Opened. Ordered. Phoned. Picked. Realized. Remembered. Replied. Started. Stayed. Stopped. Talked. Tasted. Turned. Walked. Wanted. Watched. B. Listen again and write one for d, two for t, and three for id. Answered. Arrived. Asked. Behaved. Called. Carried. Chased. Decided. Discovered. Dropped. Finished. Followed. Happened. Hated. Hurried. Jumped. Liked. Listened. Looked. Loved. Noticed. Opened. Ordered. Phoned. Picked. Realized. Remembered. Replied. Started. 
stayed, stopped, talked, tasted, turned, walked, wanted, watched. Lesson 5C. I lost my bus ticket. Exercise 2. Listen and read Greg's excuses. Why is Lynn annoyed with him? What happened? 1. On Monday. Sorry I'm late, Lynn. I left an hour ago, but I met Josh on the way here. He told me a long story about last weekend, and I didn't notice the time. 2. Last Friday I'm really sorry, Lynn. I lost my bus ticket. I think it fell out of my pocket. I didn't have any money, so I walked. 3. Yesterday morning Sorry about this. I got up late because we had a party last night. Then I made my breakfast and did the washing up. 4. Three days ago Believe it or not, I dropped a five-pound note in the street and a dog ate it. Luckily, Dad gave me some more money. I came as soon as I could. 5. Last Saturday evening. Sorry I'm late. I bought you a new calculator, but it took a long time to find the right one. I went to a lot of shops. Then, I left the calculator in the shop. Exercise 10. Listen and repeat. Then practice the conversation in pairs. I'm sorry I'm late. What happened? I took the wrong bus. Never mind, you're here now. Lesson 5D The Gold Rush Exercise 2 Read the article What are the names of the four people in this story? Gold. Gold from the American River. Who found the first gold? Before 1848, the state of California in the USA was a very quiet place. The population was just 20,000 people. Then, on the 24th of January, 1848, a man called James Marshall saw something shiny in a river in a place called Sutter's Fort. He showed his friends. Boys, he said, I think this is gold. How did the gold rush start? A man called Sam Brennan started it. He heard about the gold and opened a new store near Sutter's Fort. He wanted to sell the tools that people needed to look for gold. He needed a gold rush. In May 1848, he filled a bottle with gold dust and ran through the streets of San Francisco, shouting, Gold! Gold! Gold from the American River. Did Brennan's plan work? Yes, it did. Everyone in San Francisco left their jobs and became gold diggers. San Francisco was almost empty. Schools closed because there weren't any teachers. In August 1848, the governor of California sent some gold to the president of the USA. 
when the people of New York saw the gold, the gold rush really began. By 1850, the population of California was a hundred thousand. Some men found a lot of gold, but others weren't so lucky. What happened to James Marshall and Sam Brennan? One man became a millionaire, and the other man didn't. Can you guess who became a millionaire? Exercise 5a. Listen and note which man became a millionaire, James Marshall or Sam Brennan. Good morning, everybody. Can I have your attention, please? Welcome to Sutter's Fort. This is the place where James Marshall first showed his friends gold from the American River. Now, Marshall didn't become rich. But he found the first gold. And he didn't become rich. So, who did become rich in the gold rush? Ah, good question. Most gold diggers didn't. But men who owned businesses became rich. For example, Sam Brennan, who had a store here, became a millionaire. And Levi Strauss... Levi Strauss? Yes, Levi Strauss was the man who invented Levi jeans. He started making trousers for the gold diggers. He used material from France called Serge de Nîmes. People called it... De Nîmes. Denim. Exactly. Then some Californian businessmen made money when they sold water in the desert. Sold water? How much did it cost? Hmm. Anything from $5 a glass to $100 a glass. $100 a glass? That's expensive. And then there were people from other countries. For example, the Chinese. They opened restaurants and laundries. Laundries? Yes. Most gold diggers worked all day in the same clothes. They didn't take baths or showers. And before the laundries came, they didn't wash their clothes. <laughs> Can you imagine the smell? <laughs>
B. Listen and underline the O、oh、sounds and put a circle around the O、oh、sounds. One. The water was warm, but it wasn't hot. Two. It was raining all morning. Three. Tom and Sonia walked and talked all day. Four. What did Paul want? Five. He was bored. He just wanted to talk. Exercise ten. Listen to Sarah's story. Choose A or B to complete each sentence. Do you want to hear a silly but true story? This is something that happened to me last year. It was about four o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and I was on my way home from a friend's house. I was waiting at the bus stop. And listening to my MP3 player. It was December, and quite cold, and it was getting dark. I was wearing my new winter jacket. Then I noticed a woman on the other side of the road. She was looking at me, and she had strange green eyes. Why was she staring? Was I doing something wrong? I was just listening to music. That's all. I was starting to feel nervous. Then she crossed the road, came up to me, and said, "Excuse me, but I like your jacket. Where did you buy it?" <laughs> I just laughed. How silly of me. Lesson six B. He was driving when. Exercise one: Read the true stories from a newspaper. Which story do you think is more surprising? Crazy crimes. Great minds think alike. A man called Herman decided to kidnap a rich businessman. He broke into the businessman's house, went into the bedroom, and waited. While Herman was waiting, another man, Vincent, jumped out of the wardrobe and kidnapped Herman. Vincent was a kidnapper too. He thought Herman was the businessman. Vincent locked Herman in the house for two days. Finally, Vincent realized his mistake. Dangerous driver. A man called Michael Todd. Was driving past a railway station when he saw a beautiful woman. While she was buying a ticket, he shouted hello. She didn't reply, so he followed her into the station, in his car. He drove through the station entrance, past the ticket office, and up the steps. Then he drove along the platform and stopped next to the woman. He was still sitting in his car. When police arrested him. Exercise six B. Listen and repeat. Across. Along. Down. Into. Out of. Over. Past. Through. Up. Lesson six C. A monster which comes alive. Exercise one A. Listen and repeat. Then match the photos to the types of film. An action film. An animated film, a comedy, a crime film.
A fantasy film. A horror film. A musical. A romance. A science fiction film. A spy film. A thriller. A western. Exercise two. Listen and read. Who buys the tickets? Sorry, guys. The Batman film sold out. Which film should we see instead? How about this? It's called Girl of My Dreams. It's about a young man who dreams about the perfect girl. The next day, he goes to a bookshop where he meets a girl called Nina. That's a romance. No, thank you. What about Journey into Space? It's about some astronauts who go to Mars. Hmm. It doesn't sound very exciting. Is there anything else on? How about the pyramid? It's a horror film about a monster in an Egyptian pyramid which comes alive. Okay, that's better. Shall I get the tickets? Yes, but let's hurry. It's half past five. The next performance starts in five minutes. Exercise nine. Listen and repeat. Then practice the conversation in pairs. Can I have four tickets for Mr. Bean's holiday, please? Which performance? The five thirty or the seven fifteen? The five thirty, please. How much is that? That's twenty pounds, please. Lesson six D, the choice. Exercise two. Read about Susie and her friend Gary. How did Gary get into the festival? Going under the fence. On Wednesday, Susie left school at three thirty. Hey, Susie! Gary shouted. Come over here. Do you know about the music festival in the park on Saturday? Loads of bands are going to be there, including Radiohead. Radiohead, Susie said. They're my favourite band. I know, Gary said. But there aren't any tickets. They sold out yesterday. So I guess we can't go, said Susie. What about the cinema instead? Hmm. Yes. Okay," said Gary. Three days later, Susie.
Boston. City life. Lesson seven A. It's too noisy. Exercise one. Read the text. Where do Leroy and Caitlin live? City life or country life? Which place is the best, the city or the country? Two American teenagers talk about where they live. I live in New York, and it's great. There are huge shopping centers and interesting places to go. My mum loves all the art galleries and museums, but I like Central Park, where I go skateboarding. It's big enough to get away from the noise and the traffic. The country isn't for me. It isn't exciting enough for people of my age. Most people don't live close enough to their friends to have a good social life. It's too quiet and too boring. City life rules. Leroy, sixteen. I live on a ranch in the country in Colorado. In the summer, we go hiking in the mountains, and in the winter, I go snowboarding. I really like it because it's relaxing and quiet. I can't imagine life in the city. It isn't safe enough to walk around alone, and it's too dangerous to cycle on the streets because of the traffic. Overall, I think the city is too noisy, too dirty, too crowded, and too expensive. I prefer country life. Caitlin, fourteen. Exercise three B. Listen and repeat. Art gallery. Hospital. Hotel. Library. Market. Museum. Petrol station. Police station. Shopping center. Theater. Travel agents. Tourist information center. Town hall. Zoo. Lesson seven B. How long is he staying? Exercise one. Read and listen. Complete the dialogue with the correct phrases from the box. Greg, Lynn, and Polly. Are waiting for a friend at the Eurostar terminal in St Pancras Station, London. I can't wait to see Jang again. Remind me, who's Jang? Is he your cousin? No, he isn't. He's a family friend. He's from Hong Kong, but he works in Paris. Is he good looking?、Mm, not bad. But he's a bit old for you. How long is he staying? About ten days. He's taking my mum and me to Scotland next weekend. That's a long way. Are you going by car? No, we aren't. We're going by plane. He's treating us. He sounds lovely. Yeah, lovely. Oh, Greg, you're jealous. Me jealous? Come off it. Hey. We've got half an hour before his train arrives. Let's have a drink. It's my treat. Exercise six B. Listen and repeat. Caravan. Ferry. Helicopter. Minibus. Moped. Ship, van. Lesson seven C. I'd like spaghetti, please. Exercise two. Pronunciation. Ch, cheese. 
sh, fish. A. Listen and repeat. Cheese. Chicken. Chips. Chocolate. Sugar. Fish. Fresh fruit. Mashed potatoes. B. Listen and underline the ch sounds and put a circle around the sh sounds. One. Chicken and chips, please. Two. Fish and chips, please. Three. Is the fish fresh? Four. Chips or mashed potatoes? Five. Chocolate ice cream or fresh fruit? Exercise four. Listen and read. What's wrong with Greg's food? Toby and Greg are in a restaurant. What would you like? I'd like spaghetti bolognese, please. Why don't you try something new? No, I like pasta. What's wrong with that? Would you like some garlic bread? No, thanks. I don't like garlic. And for you? I'll have the steak tartare, please. Do you know what steak tartare is, Greg? Yes, of course I do. And some chips, please. And can we have two colas, please? Five minutes later. One spaghetti bolognese and one steak tartare. Thank you. Uh, Toby, this isn't cooked. You didn't tell me that steak tartare is raw. Exercise six. Listen to the conversation in the restaurant and complete the dessert section in exercise five. Now, desserts. What would you like, Toby? I think I'll have cheesecake. What about you, Greg? What would you like? Fruit salad? No thanks. Can I have the apple pie and cream? And some vanilla ice cream too. Greg, you're so greedy. I'm not. I'm still hungry. I couldn't eat any of that steak tartare. Excuse me. Uh, can we have a cheesecake and an apple pie and cream? And some vanilla ice cream too, please. Fine. Any coffee or tea? No, thanks. And can I have the bill too, please? Lesson 7D. Eating out in the UK and the USA. Exercise 1. Read about eating out in British and American restaurants. London and New York are famous for their interesting restaurants. We asked Meredith, 14, from London, and Ralph, 15, from New York, to tell us how often they eat out and where they like to go in their city. Meredith I eat out once a week. My parents usually take me to a Chinese or an Indian restaurant at the weekend. But my favourite place to eat is the Rainforest Cafe in central London. It looks like a rainforest with wild animals. They're not real. And the food's great. Ralph. I eat out quite a lot. Once a week, I go to a pizza restaurant with my friends. And twice a week, I go out with my parents. We usually have a Chinese or an Italian meal. But my favourite place to eat is the Hard Rock Cafe. It's got loud music and fantastic photos of rock singers on the walls.
Fact file. Restaurants. Italian and Chinese restaurants are popular in both London and New York. There are also a lot of Indian and Thai restaurants in London, and Mexican restaurants in New York. Cafes. London has cheap cafes where the food is fried and not very healthy. Some people call these greasy spoon cafes. New York has diners. These are typical American cafes with a wide variety of foods and a long counter. Where teenagers go. A survey of 13 to 16-year-old teenagers in London and New York found that 85% regularly go to either burger bars or pizza restaurants. 80% say that their favorite place to celebrate a birthday is a theme restaurant, like a music cafe or a sports cafe. Exercise four. Justin is a New Yorker who is living in London. Listen to him talking about some of the differences. Make notes in the chart. Welcome to the food program, Justin. Thank you. Tell us about the restaurants in London and New York. What time do people go to restaurants in New York? Any time of the day or night. But in general, I think people eat earlier in New York than you do here in London. In New York, it's quite common for people to go to a restaurant at about five or six p.m. and finish at eight or nine p.m. Whereas in London, people go to restaurants between seven and eight thirty, and the meal finishes at ten or eleven p.m. That's too late for Americans. What about the size of portions? Are they bigger in New York? It depends on the type of restaurant, but in some of the cheaper restaurants in New York, the portions are very big, bigger than the average portion in the UK. Pizzas and steaks can be the same size as your plate. They're too big to finish for most people, but the good thing is that if you can't finish your meal. You can take it away in a bag and eat it at home the next day. Do you think American and British people like the same sort of food? Not really. Here in Britain, people love hot, spicy foods from other countries. They say that an Indian or Thai curry is now Britain's most popular dish, but it's too spicy for Americans. Americans don't like spicy foods very much. They prefer pizza, steak, spaghetti, that kind of thing. There are Indian and Thai restaurants in New York, but in my opinion, the food in America isn't spicy enough. Unit Eight, Friends, Lesson Eight A. Which one do you like? Exercise One. Listen and read. Complete the dialogue with the correct phrases from the box. Josh is going skiing for the first time and is borrowing some ski clothes from Greg's family. Here. This is Dad's old ski jacket. Hmm, it's a bit bright, and I'm not sure about all those zips and pockets. Why don't you try this one on? It's Toby's old one. All right. How does it look? Does it suit me? Yes, it looks great. Now try these ski trousers. They don't look right. They're too tight. What about these ones? They're quite loose and baggy. 
Okay. Oh, hi girls. What do you think of these trousers? They look good. You need a hat. Which one do you like? Mmm, the striped one. It's more my style. Look, pink gloves. Why don't you try them on? No way. I'm not wearing those. Exercise 3B. Listen and repeat. Accessories. Belt. Gloves. Pocket. Scarf. Zip. Style. Baggy. Casual. Sleeveless. Smart. Tight. Pattern. Checked. Flowery. Patterned. Plain. Spotted. Striped. Exercise 5. Pronunciation. Ch. Checked. J. Jacket. A. Listen and repeat. Checked. Cheese. Child. Lunch. Watch. Jacket. Jeans. Japanese. Juice. Jump. B. Listen and underline the ch sounds and put a circle around the j sounds. 1. Can I have a chicken sandwich and an apple juice, please? 2. John was wearing a checked shirt and jeans. 3. I went by coach to London and then had lunch. 4. Jump out of the car. Now jog three times round the park. Exercise 6. Listen and repeat. Then practice the conversation in pairs. Do you like my new red top? Yes, it looks good. It suits you. What shall I wear with it? Why don't you wear your black trousers? OK. Which shoes do you prefer? Mm. I prefer the black ones. Lesson 8b. If my friend has a problem... Exercise 1. Do the quiz and then look at the key. What sort of friend are you? What sort of friend are you? 1. If my friend has a problem, I A. Listen to him, her, and try to understand B. Go out with him, her, and have some fun C. Tell him, her, what to do 2. If my friend thinks his her homework is difficult, I A. Try to help him, her, to understand it. B. Say, 
Don't worry, it's only homework. C. Tell him, her, to ask the teacher for help. 3. If my friend is ill, I usually A. Visit him, her B. Send him, her a get well soon text C. Tell him, her how to get better 4. If I don't like my friend's clothes, I A. Don't tell him, her, it's not important. B. Say, your clothes are interesting. C. Say, I don't like your clothes. 5. If my friend is a bit late, I A. Wait for him, her B. Don't get angry, because I'm always late. C. Text him, her, and say, hurry up. 6. If it's my friend's birthday, I usually A. Make something for him, her. B. Choose a fun present for him, her. C. Choose a useful present for him, her. Key. Mostly A's. You are kind and helpful. You don't like telling the truth if it upsets your friends. Mostly B's. You are easygoing and good fun, but you don't like listening to your friends' problems. Mostly C's. You are honest. You speak your mind, but you can sometimes be a bit bossy. Exercise 2. Listen and repeat. Annoying. Bad-tempered. Big-headed. Bossy. Clever. Cute. Easy-going. Friendly. Funny. Generous. Hard-working. Helpful. Honest. Kind. Lazy. Loyal. Mean. Polite. Quiet. Rude. Shy. Tidy. Unfriendly. Untidy. Exercise 5. Listen to Natalie and Helen. Answer the questions. That's a really nice computer, Natalie. What do you use it for? Oh, you know, the normal stuff. I do my homework, I surf the internet, and I chat to people online. Oh, I don't know how to use chat rooms. OK, I can show you. This website is my favourite. First you type in a name. Do you use your real name? No, you don't. You must never tell people any personal information in chat rooms. You don't know who you're speaking to. And you must never meet people from chat rooms because it isn't safe. Oh, so do you really speak to people? No, you don't speak, you type. Let's chat to some people. I've got a lot of friends from all over the world on this website. OK, so who's Pablo99? Oh, he's a chat room friend. He's really friendly and helpful. If I have computer problems, I always ask him. And who's Princess Clara? She's another chatroom friend. She's really funny, but she's a bit bossy. 
If I tell her my problems, she gives a lot of advice. Are people always polite in chat rooms? No, not always. But if someone is rude, then people don't chat to him or her. Oh, look! Pablo99 is saying hi to you. Let's chat to Pablo99. Hi, Pablo99. How are you? I'm here with my friend, H1. Look, here's his answer. Hi, H1. If you're a friend of London Girl, you're a friend of mine. Hey, I think I have a new online friend. Here, you can chat to him. Lesson 8C. She isn't ugly. Exercise 1B. Listen and repeat. General looks. Attractive. Handsome. Ordinary looking. Pretty. Ugly. Build. Fat. Large. Medium build. Slim. Thin. Well built. Exercise 2. Read the interview. How is Lucy Gardner similar to Ugly Betty? Ugly Betty. Ugly Betty is a popular sitcom, situation comedy, on television. The main character is Betty Suarez, a secretary at a fashion magazine. All her colleagues are slim and attractive and mad about clothes. But Betty's a bit shy and she isn't interested in her appearance. The actress who plays Betty is a beautiful woman called America Ferreira. Last week, I interviewed Lucy Gardner from Bristol, one of Betty's greatest fans. Do you think Betty is ugly? No, I don't think so. She looks ordinary, but some people think she's quite pretty. She just doesn't care about her appearance or her clothes. What does Betty look like? Can you explain for people who don't know the programme? She's medium height and medium build and she's got long dark wavy hair. But unlike America Ferreira, she wears thick glasses and she's got braces on her teeth. Actually, braces are quite normal for young people. I had braces when I was younger. What's she like as a person? She's really funny and friendly and lots of people like her. Are you like Betty? Yes, we're quite similar. Betty is always very shy at parties. Me too. Parties aren't my thing. Lesson 8D. Do opposites attract? Exercise 2. Read the text. Check your answers to exercise 1. How did the celebrity friends meet? Opposites attract. True or false? Has your best friend got a similar personality to you? Or are you and your friend very different? People often say that opposites attract. But is it really true? Psychologists in the USA discovered that opposites can attract in new love relationships. If one person loves going to parties and the other person feels shy at parties, they often have a good relationship at first. But scientists also say that these relationships don't last for a long time. For long relationships, we prefer people who are like us. Quiet people like quiet people, and good-looking people like other attractive people. Also, friends often like the same music, films, 
sports and school subjects. Are the psychologist's ideas true? Let's look at some famous people. Brad Pitt and George Clooney met when they were working on the film Ocean's Eleven, but they are now very good friends. At first, they don't seem very similar. George is dark with grey hair, and Brad is fair. George is still single, but Brad is a family man with children. But other things are the same. They have the same sense of humour, and they both help charities for poor people. Spanish film star Penelope Cruz and Mexican actress Salma Hayek became friends when they made a film together. They are very similar. They both speak Spanish. They look quite similar, and they are both very fit. They are also quite ambitious. Exercise six. Listen to Billy and Holly talking about their best friends. Complete the table. And now over to Andy Rollins for Friends Talk. This week on Friends Talk, we're looking at the subject of best friends. Are best friends always similar? Do they like the same things, or are they sometimes different? Call me and tell me what you think. But first, here are some people I spoke to earlier today on the streets of London. Hi, I'm Billy. My best friend is Jake. He's a great friend. He's really funny and interesting. But we have lots of arguments because we like different things. You know, he likes computer games and skateboarding. But I like museums and reading. But he's interesting, and I like that. If we do our homework together, he gives me good ideas. Hello, I'm Holly. I love football. I'm a big Manchester United fan. My best friend is Diane, and she goes to every football game with me. If the team play well, we're really happy. If they lose, we don't mind too much. We're both quite easygoing. It's strange because we look similar too. We've both got blonde hair and blue eyes.